The world of computers, networks and storage are full of confusing terms that go over the heads of the average Joe. But without a doubt, the most commonly confused term amongst the masses are bits and bytes. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrent we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Since both terms, bits and bytes, basically sound the same, they are often confused for each other and used interchangeably. It doesn't help that both terms are used pretty frequently when talking about tech without much explanation. On top of that, whenever these terms are used, they are most commonly used with their acronym form with the prefixes such as kilo, mega or giga. So here's a little test for you out there. What is the B in this MB slash S stand for? Is it bit or is it byte? I'll give you a few seconds to guess. If you answered bytes, then you are correct. So let's get into the nitty gritty details and answer questions like what are the differences between the two? Why do both of these terms exist in the first place? And how can you tell bits and bytes apart the next time you see this term being used anywhere. So starting with the first question, what are the differences between bit and byte? Well, computers use a binary system to represent any type of data. The binary system only needs two digits, one and zero, and it can represent any data with a combination of the two. So to put it simply, a bit is the smaller size of the two and is the smallest unit of data. A bit can either be represented with a one or a zero, so it doesn't really get much smaller than that in the digital world. A byte, on the other hand, is also a unit of data, but it represents a slightly larger unit of measure. A byte consists of eight bits. So a string of eight numbers like 0000, 0, 0, 0 1111 would take up eight bits, but only one byte. And it's basically as simple as that. Computers work on and with data and the units of bits and bytes help us get an idea of how much data there is. Another important function with both of these units that they serve is that they give us an idea of the rate of transmission of data. So by measuring the number of bits or bytes that can be transferred over a second, it can give us a vague idea of how long it may take for the data transmission to let's say complete. But this raises another question. Why is it that in tech, we see that we are either using bits for data speeds for certain devices, but then for other speeds, we use bytes. That's pretty confusing for a lot of people. Well, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. The reason both of these terms exist is because of how widely data transmission rates differ between transmitting data locally and transmitting data on a network. Typically, data transmission is very fast locally when compared to data transmission over a network. So when talking about data transfer rates or stored locally, bytes is normally used along with a prefix, so like kilo, mega and giga. Over the years, file sizes as they have grown larger and larger, the term byte has become more important to express large data file sizes. Just to give you an idea, a one megabyte file is equivalent to an eight million bit file. This means it would have eight million individual ones and zeros that it represents for that particular data. A byte unit allows us to express this huge number easily. So while locally we are used to seeing file sizes in bytes, when we talk about internet speeds, suddenly it gets all confusing again. This is where instead of using bytes, bits are usually used to convey the data transfer speeds. So when your ISP or internet service provider tells you that your internet is 100 Mbps, the smaller B here is for bit, not byte. So you won't be downloading 100 megabytes per second, but rather 12.5 megabytes per second. This can make it confusing for some people who are trying to decide what internet speed they should go for. The reason transfer speeds over the network are usually talked about in bits and not bytes is because genuinely transfer speeds over a network is slower than transfer speeds and file sizes that are stored locally. This is why you'll commonly see terminology like kilobits per second, megabits per second, and even gigabits per second when talking about internet speeds and connection speeds and not talking about it in bytes per second. 
It can be confusing when you're looking at, let's say, an external SSD because the connection speed and transfer speeds are both written in bits and bytes. This is because the type of connection that the drive has, like USB 3.2 or Thunderbolt, is spoken about in bits for the connection speed, and then the SSD or hard drive that's actually in it is normally represented in the speed of bytes per second. The good thing about this whole bits and bytes business is that you can honestly easily tell them apart once you learn the difference. Difference. When written, a capital B is used for byte while a small b is used for bit. So if you see this written, now you can easily tell that it's killer bits per second and not killer bytes per second. For killer bytes per second, then it would be written as this. Sometimes you'll even see bits being written as kilo bits per second like this or even written as this k bits per second. Only when the B is capitalized does it mean bytes or obviously when it's explicitly written. The confusion between bits and bytes is as common as it is simple. Both are units of data, just one is larger than the other. While tech enthusiasts are exposed to these terms day and night and can easily tell them apart, an average internet user might not be as proficient in these subtle differences. But no need to worry because now you know the differences between them both and how and why they are used. So next time you go out and buy an SSD drive or an internet plan, you'll know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Anyway, I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, then make sure to smash a like and comment down below. And also make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>